Good Friday evening, everyone. This is not just a Friday night, but it is Good Friday. A unique Friday. The Friday when at the ninth hour, Jesus cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Meaning, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He did that for you and for me at a moment where he surrendered his life to God. He gave his life so that everyone, the whole world, can be saved because of what he did. Because he gave his life for the entire world. He gave his life for you and for me out of love because he loves us. That's why he gave his life for all of us. And therefore, it's important to be grateful. It's important to understand that he loves us so much that he died for us. He died for our sin. God is still answering prayer. As we conclude our series today, God answers prayer. I know today that, that, that God will bless you in a remarkable way. God will bless you in a special way. So that's why, please, Text someone, invite someone to listen to this broadcast. Today is a day of celebration. It's a night where we're going to celebrate. But I'm going to give you some keys to the answer of your prayer. My God, this is good. This is excited. I'm excited. I'm full of excitement because God, is about to answer your prayer. You are about to unlock the answer to your prayer. What? There is the thing. What if your prayer, what the, the answer to your prayer lies in your response to God? Lies in what you will say or what you will do next? Maybe, maybe the answer to your prayer is what you have to do or what you have to say. That might be the answer to your prayer. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, it says now, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let us not Grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, for at the appointed time, God will answer. We will reap if we faint not. So all the good things that you are doing today, they are not in vain. The scripture says, don't grow weary because it can weigh you down. Don't grow weary for in due season you will reap. Meaning you have to stand fast. Jesus did everything what he had to do. He did everything. He carried the cross. Oh, he walked to the street of Jerusalem went up to the garden of Gethsemane. He went there and he started praying. He began to pray and he prayed. He did all that with his disciples. They moved from the garden of Gethsemane to the Mount of Golgotha. There is where Jesus at one point he spread his arm on the cross and he asked God a question. 
He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He knew that at that moment, the word forsaken there is like the translation of that word forsaken means you hold someone tight. And at one different moment, that person was trusting in you. But you hold that person tight. And that person take his arms from you. So leaving you all by yourself. The faith, the trust you have in that person is gone. You still trust him. You still have faith in that person. But that person has let you go. That is the moment that Jesus experienced on the cross. Because, because this is what happened on the cross. On Good Friday, this is what happened. The Bible said, he who knew no sin became sin. Now Jesus, understand the Good Friday message. Jesus was not a sinner. He didn't become a sinner. But he became sin. All the sins of everyone who ever lived on earth. All the sins of everyone who are living. Who are here in the present. And all the sins of those who will come. Who will live. Were upon Jesus. All the sins of mankind was upon Jesus. So now Jesus became sin. Now when God looked at Jesus, he didn't see his son anymore, but he saw the sin of you and me and everyone. He saw the sin of the entire world. When God looked upon Jesus, all what he saw is the sin of the entire world. Now God, at that moment, God had to turn his face away from Jesus. Now Jesus knew that this moment was coming. This was the dreadful moment that Jesus was so scared for. Jesus was terrified. Jesus was scared. The Bible said he was so scared that his sweat turned into blood. All his veins start popping, pop, pop, pop. Because Jesus knew that the moment was coming. The moment where God was, will, will let go of his arm. Where God would turn his back against him. So Jesus knew that this moment was at hand. Jesus was terrified because of this particular moment. The idea of him being without God. The idea of him living without God. The idea of him being without God for a moment. Jesus, at that very moment, Jesus knew that that moment, that dreadful moment has come where God will have to turn his back to Jesus. He knew that. He didn't want to live without God. What is your condition today? Where are you today? Do you think it's safe to live without God? Do you think it is the best way to go without God? Do you think you're going to weather the storm without God? Jesus, who was the son of God, who came on earth, took on the form of man. He was 100% God. But he was 100% human. Jesus left the attributes that makes him God in heaven. He didn't leave his glory. He didn't leave his glory in heaven. He left 
the attributes that makes him God. That's what he left in heaven. Because at, on earth, Jesus was 100% God and he was 100% human. Jesus as a human being was terrified for this moment, Good Friday. Because he knew that all of our sins, he bore our sins. All of our sin was upon him. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. The punishment that brings us peace, the punishment that brought us joy and happiness and peace and salvation was upon Jesus. Everything, all our sins, all our iniquities, all our wrongdoing was upon him. Was upon Jesus. And therefore, God has to, had to turn his back against Jesus. And now Jesus cried. He cried. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Understand every time Jesus prayed, every time Jesus prayed, Jesus never said, my God. He said, my Father. He taught us how to pray. And he said, when you pray, say, our Father, which is in heaven. He called him Father. But at that moment, he called him God. He was separated from God. He was separated from his Father because he became sin. The sin of mankind, he had to carry them. And that's why he had to separate. God had to separate because sin separates us from God, the sin had to separate Jesus with his father. Now Jesus, at that moment, he was alone. The first time, the very first time, he had to separate himself from God. Why? Because of the love that God has for you and for me. Because of the love that God has for this world. Because of the love that he has for you. He, his love is so big that he said, I'm going to give my life for you. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he cares for you. That's how much he wants you to be a part of him. His love is everlasting. His love will never end. Even though you may not feel his love at times. Even though you may go through a crisis right now and you may not feel his love. You may not even experience his love. Because all you experience is calamity after calamity. It's it's, it's pandemic after pandemic, but, but, but I, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell somebody that Christ loves you so much that he paid the price for you. He paid the ransom for you. The price that you had to pay yourself, Christ paid it for you. That's why we celebrate Good Friday, because Jesus Christ paid the price for us. He stepped out of glory, step out of heaven. And he said, I will go for them. I will go and pay the price because no one else can pay the price. You could go on the cross and pay the price for mankind, but at the end of the day, you will stay in the grave because guess what? You have to pay for your own sin. Hmm. You have to die and you have to pay for your own sin. God couldn't raise you up because you have to pay for your sin. But Jesus had no sin. He became sin. The sin was upon him, but he, he was not a sinner. What a mystery. He became sin, but yet not a sinner. In other words, the sin was upon him. He had to carry it. 
The sin didn't go inside of him because the Bible said he was obedient and obedience till the death. Jesus never ever sinned. He never ever sinned. Even though he asked God, so God, if it's possible, please, if it's possible, please remove this cup away from me. Help me not to go through it if it's possible. But then he comes back and he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. Not my will, Lord. He knew that even though he was praying that prayer, he knew he had to drink that cup. He had to pay the price. He knew that at one point in his life, he would be without God. My God, my God, my God. This is what we call love. This is what we call love. Do you think that after he paid such a high price, after he prayed such a huge ransom, do you think that after he paid he, with his life for you, he will let you go? Do you think that God who gave his life for you, he will let you go? He won't because he loves you. So no matter what is going on in your life today, I want you to understand that he loves you. Oh, I'm here to preach love. He loves you. Oh, love feels good. Do you know that times you may not feel love? You may feel alone. But if you have God, you are not alone. You may feel lonely, but if you have God, you're not alone. People may not call you. People may not come and visit you. People may not be in touch with you as you would like to. But I want to let you know that you're not alone. That God is on your side. That God wants to be part of your life. That God wants to be part of your existence. He paid the price today. For you and for me on the cross of Calvary. That's why he said, God, why hast thou forsaken me? That moment in the ninth hour, that particular moment in history, the Bible says, oh, good God gracious. The Bible says that when he screamed like that, the Bible said after that he gave up the ghost. He gave up the ghost. Jesus died. Jesus died on the cross. On Good Friday, he's dead. Bible said after his death, something happened in the temple. And that's where I'm going to right now because we're talking about prayer and, and the answering of prayer. Hmm. Something happened in the temple. They said as they were in the temple, all the temple curtains split in half and it's open. <laughs> you see, the temple was a place that was only authorized by the high priest to enter in. No one else could enter into behind the curtains but the high priest. Only the high priest were authorized to go inside. But now after Jesus' death, the temple curtain was split in two and was open. Gives us access to the presence of God. Therefore, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. Oh, God Almighty, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. You don't have to wait anymore for a priest to confess your sin to a priest. You don't have to wait anymore for a priest to sacrifice the animals, sacrifice turtle doves, sacrifice the, for the, the poor to, 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 to use flowers. You don't need that anymore. You don't need the sacrifice of the animals anymore because the true sex, sacrificial lamb appear, which is Jesus. He is the ultimate sacrifice. He is the one who sacrificed his life for you and for me once and for all. So he died and his blood 
shed on the cross of Calvary. And as a result of his blood, today we can be forgiven. Today we can ask God to forgive us and he will forgive us and cleanse us with his blood. Because of the blood of Jesus that was shed, oh my God, at the cross of Calvary. My son said, as every day I pray with my children, I pray with my family, and every day I will ask God to cleanse them with his blood, to wash them. My son said, Daddy, but I have to ask you this. I've been, I've noticed this. I, I noticed that you've been, this is how he said it. It was funny, but it, the, it's the reality. This is how he said it. Daddy, I've been, I've been, I've been watching you. You've been washing us every day with the blood. I, I, that boy gave me an impression like I'm here with a bucket full of blood washing them. No, he said, Daddy, you've been washing us with the blood every day. Don't you think that this blood will cease at some point? Oh, I have good news for you. I look at him and said, no, the blood will not cease. The blood is forever. The blood is here to stay. The blood that was shed for you on the cross of Calvary, oh, the same blood has power today. The same blood gives you access into the Holy of Holies. The same blood gives you the access to go beyond the courtyard so that you don't have to wait anymore for someone to go inside of the temple and bring sacrifice for you. But you can bring your own sacrifice. You can bring yourself. The Bible said, therefore, be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice of the Lamb. You can be a living sacrifice every day. You can surrender your life to God. Every day you can give your life to him because you are a living sacrifice every day. My God, my God, Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. He gave it all up. So because the temple is open, the glory of God is accessible to you and to me. We can enter. We don't have to be afraid that he will kill us. We don't have to be afraid that somebody may have to tie a rope on our waist and and serve in the temple, and they're not sure whether we should, we, we, we will live or not, because this is what the high priest would do. The high priest garment had bells. They had to tie the rope on the high priest's waist as the high priest was serving. And if the high priest didn't confess his own sin, didn't bring sacrifice for his own sin, wasn't right before God, he will fall dead in the presence of God. He will die. So when they didn't see or hear the bell anymore, they knew, oh, he did. Come on, pull him out. Next was going. Every time they would go to God, they were scared. They didn't know what would happen. They were never sure what would happen. But my God, this is the area. This is the dispensation of grace. God is the same dreadful God, but God is showing us his love. He said, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared. Just come as you are. Just come as you are. Oh my God, this term has been used in the church forever. Come as you are. And, and, and today, let me tell you something. For those of you that are home, you can literally come as you are. Literally, just as you are. In your PJ, in whatever you have, just come as you are. There is no dress code right now. Mm -mm. Come as you are. The Lord will accept you just as you are. Because the temple is open. The screen was parted in two. There is access. So, so, the answer to your prayer might lie in your action. What are you going to do? What are you going to do with what you just heard? Jesus paid the ultimate price for you and for me. There is access. There is access. Don't be wary in well-doing. Don't give up. Jesus didn't give up. He said, it's difficult. I want to give up. So it's okay if you feel like giving up sometimes. It's okay if you feel like throwing the towel and walk away. It's okay if you feel like this is not fair. It's okay 
If you're suffering a loss and you feel like giving up and you question God and you even curse God, it's okay. But I'm here to tell you, no matter what you have done, the curtain is open. There is access to the presence of God. He'll forgive you. No one can look at you in the eyes and say, I know what you are, are feeling. I know that feeling. Only you know that feeling. Only you know that pain. Only you know the heartbreak right now. Only you know how deep it cuts. The news that you heard, the bad news that you got the other day, only you know how deep it cuts. No one else. There is an answer. There is a solution. Come to Jesus. He paid the price for you. And he said, I didn't die in vain. I died for you. I gave my life for you. I gave my life for you. Now come unto me. And I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I will give you joy. I will restore you. I will give you satisfaction. Come unto me. If you heard the, the word, I want to pray with you. Then thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you heard what I just said, and you said, I want to come to God because of his love, because he loves me. Someone just dumped me, blaming the coronavirus. Someone just walk away from me. Someone just walk out on me. Someone just beat me up. You're struggling because as a result of abuse, as a result of, of violence in the house, as a result of infidelity, you're struggling right now. You don't know what to do. You don't even know what your tomorrow brings. And some of you, you may even contemplating suicide. Don't do it. Jesus already did it for you. He died for you. He knew he was going to die. He knew it. And yet he went there. So he went and paid for you. Come to Jesus. Pray with me. Say, Father, I am a sinner and I need a Savior. I can't carry this anymore. Forgive me. Cleanse me with your blood. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. For your love is everlasting. Help me to serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. You've prayed this prayer. He came into your heart, and guess what? You are a child of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Please serve him. Don't walk away from him, but stay close to him. And watch him turning your situation around. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. We are celebrating Good Friday. Father, we are excited. We are grateful for paying this price for us. He who knew no, no sin became sin. You became sin. Father, so that we can be saved. So that we can be saved. Oh my God, we can be saved. The world is in turmoil today. The world is in crisis today. The world is in, a, in an unsafe environment. The world is in an unsafe condition. The world is in jeopardy. The world is crying day and night. They are suffering. They are struggling. Lord God Almighty, we have access to the throne of grace. We can come boldly, Lord Jesus, without any fear, knowing that God is a rewarder for those that seek him diligently, knowing 
that the word says, he that come to you must believe, Lord Jesus. So we come by faith and we ask you to forgive us. We ask to forgive our fellow Americans. We ask you to forgive people in the world. Forgive my God. Cleanse with your blood. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your grace, God, that you will show your grace. Father, you will cause people to experience your love. And then they will surrender their lives to you. They will give their hearts. God, we intercede. We pray and we intercede for this nation. We intercede for the nations of the world. We intercede, God, for all the leaders. We intercede, God, for all the frontline workers. We intercede, God, Jesus, for these people. God, save, save, and save, my God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've been so good, Father, and that your goodness will last forever. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your saving grace. Touch the mother right now that is struggling right now. Father, touch the person that are complaining, that are contemplating suicide. Touch God. Father, touch that person that is struggle of this endless migraine. We command that to stop in Jesus' name. For the touch, this man that is about to throw the towel. For the touch, Lord, those that are sick in their body. Please let your hands touch. Let healing occur right now. For those of you that are under the sound of my voice, be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. I speak healing over you. I speak peace over you. I speak rest over you. Be healed in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is touching you right now. He is touching you. He paid the price for you. He said, by his stripes, you were healed. So you already heal. Receive your healing right now. Receive your freedom right now. Receive your deliverance right now. Generational curse are being broken over your life. You are being set free to die. Be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree that you are free. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Please join me for our uh, Easter service. I'll be right here at 1 o'clock. Please come and join me. And I know that it will be an awesome time that we're going to spend together. It'll be an amazing time. I have a word for you for Easter. Don't stay at home, but come and join me. Praise the Lord. As I said, join me right here on set and share this message with a friend and like me on, 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 on Facebook and on um, subscribe on YouTube. And please let somebody know about this message because this will bless them and again as always god bless you god bless your family stay safe follow the instruction of your local officials and all the nurses and teachers may god bless you i love you all god bless you and i'll see you again